One thing I think that uh, is really a consideration when we're fishing spring creek waters is I see a, a lot of people just go out and start fishing the water. And that is really a tough way to be successful. Some of the sp smaller spring creeks that are real prolific will have a lot of fish in them and you can just stand in one place and maybe catch fish. But a big river like this one, the Henry's Fork of the Snake, you really need to look for larger fish and to stock those fish and to ha be able to recognize the rise of a large fish versus the smaller fish. Big fish like to kind of get off by themselves and and they don't make a lot of a disturbance when they rise. They'll just come up and poke their nose up. And so that's what you really want to look for. You want to be patient and observant and take your time and really look at the water so that you don't miss the opportunity to have a chance to cast to a really large fish. That's a lot more important than having the right fly. I think so much is written on matching the hatch and having the correct fly but there are so many other things that we need to consider first like approaching the fish and finding the fish and having the right presentation and then we'll have the chance to match the hatch and use the fly that we feel we should use. We've got some fish down here below us and there's there's about five or six fish and we've been observing these little fish, these, they're not little fish, they're big fish, and I've been observing them, trying to see what they're doing, because some of them are cruising around, and I think that's an important thing to remember, is don't just decide where you're going to fish and wade right out and start fishing, because a lot of these fish in Spring Creek situations will do a lot of cruising around, and you might wade right in on a fish, and then he'll swim up and spook the, all the others, so there's about five nice fish down here and I'm going to try to sneak down this bank and uh, start in below them and fish upstream to them. It's a little too deep for me to get across and, and wade around and come in from the other side so I'm going to try an upstream approach to get below the fish and cast up. And I'm going to try to use a dry fly because at least a couple of these fish are rising pretty regularly. Now there's a whole bunch of fish over there rising next to that weed bed. And the inclination maybe would be to go over there and fish to those fish, but notice they make real splashy rises and there's a whole pack of them together. Where these bigger fish that I'm after, they're kind of more solitary, just one at a time and they make a real soft, quiet rise. So that's what I'm looking for. He looked at it. That time he rose up and looked, but he wouldn't take it, so I'm going to have to change flies. There's a lot of little mayflies here on the water, but I can also see some ants and stuff. I think I'll try a little no-hackle. I've got my little no-hackle on. Oh, he took it, you see that? He took it and I missed him. I'm going to sneak just a little closer if I can.
Ooh. There's a big fish. I'm afraid he's gonna see me and spook. Here he comes. He's almost right under me. Here he comes. I got him. Boy, he liked that no hackle. Trying to clear all this loose line, get him on the reel. Now he's trying to get up under the bank, so I'm going to try to keep it out this way and keep the pressure so he can't get under there. Now he's running at me, so you want to strip line and keep it from... See here, he's going to go right between my legs. There he's, he's carrying on. I like to keep the line on the reel if I can, but... Sometimes you just don't have a chance to once they run at you. Now he's starting to tire a little. I'm going to try to get some line. I'm winding it on tight with running it through my fingers so I don't get a bunch of loops in the reel. I'm always a lot more comfortable when I get my fish on the reel. Where this fish ran upstream too, it's kind of an advantage because he has to fight me and the current. He's still putting up a little battle, but if I could get him netted, I'd like to. I, I like to still leave a little energy in a fish if I can and not play him right out. There he is. A nice fish. Took that little no hack on. He's got this is a really a kind of a prize, I think, for this river because we call him a hybrid. This is a real pretty fish. This is a about an 18 or 19 inch fish. My net's 20 inches long, so I'd say fish is in that neighborhood. And getting him on a small dry fly is a that's what Spring Creek fishing is all about to me. This, this fly is right up in this mandible. That's the little no hackle, so I'm going to take my forceps and get it out of him there. Boy, it's stuck, it's a, even though it was a barbless hook. Releasing a guy like this, too, he put up a heck of a battle. So I don't want to just let him go because he might swim under one of these banks of weeds and roll over and die. So he's trying to fight me a little right now. But I want to give him time to make sure he's in good shape. There he goes. Now he'll swim off and maybe I can try to catch him again sometime. This is the fly that I caught that fish with. And it was stuck right in his mandible so it doesn't look like much. It, I had to twist it to get it out even though I had it pinched down. But I love this kind of pattern on the Spring Creek waters. And even though the wings are all split up, the fish still really go after these. They really look like a mayfly done. I'll get one out and show you what it looked like before I fished with it. Now this is what the no hackle looks like when it's a nice fresh one. And I'm only going to take a couple of casts and those wings will split up and sometimes that bothers the fishermen but it sure doesn't bother the trout. I think this is the most effective mayfly imitation that has ever been developed at least I've sure found it to be true on these spring creek waters. So I'm going to tie this new one back on and see if I can catch another fish.
one of the things that probably gives fly fishermen the most fits is the wind. And we've just managed to get the wind to blow a little bit here today so that we can talk about it. And wind actually can be your friend. You can use it to help you. One thing it does is it, it can concentrate the insects, especially if you're fishing along a bank, dry fly fishing, and the wind will blow the bugs all over along a, maybe a scum line or something, and that is good. And the other thing, especially with Spring Creek type waters like this here on the Henry's Fork, is you can approach the fish a little easier if the surface is riffled up. But what you can't do is present the fly as easily as you could if the wind wasn't blowing. And there are several things that you can do to kind of compensate for the wind, but I just want to show you a couple of the casts that I like to make when the wind's blowing. And so I can get, get down and, and make my cast with the wind. And that works real good, except the problem that I often encounter is it's hard to make a slack line cast with the wind behind you because as your forward cast come, rolls over, the wind's just going to help straighten it right out. And a lot of times that's not what you want for, for uh, dry fly fishing is a straight line cast. Uh, for distance casting, I think you just almost have to get the wind behind you, if at all possible. And for, for making a distance cast, and I don't have a rod that's designed for throwing a lot of line, but you want to throw your back cast down low into the wind, and then your forward cast up. If you're making a distance cast, you'll drop the line low and then cast high, and then the wind will carry it. If you throw the back cast up into the air like this, then the wind's going to catch that and pile it up. So that's the time you want the wind behind you. Now I think that when, you're, when you want to make a slack line cast, you're going to do better to actually cast a little bit into the wind and let the wind kind of pile your leader up. So I would approach more from this angle now this is a tough cast because if I, if I cast with the tip of the rod like this, the line's just going to blow right back into my face by throwing the line up high. So the object we've got to do is get that line low, make our forward cast low. And we'll use a cast we call the butt cast. We want to drive the line with this part of the rod and we want to throw the back cast high and then drive that line low. So we cast high, and then we'll drive it down like that. That's the same kind of cast that, that I like to use when I'm float fishing out of a drift boat with a big fly. It's called the butt cast. And if you'll work on that, then you can still get a little bit of slack line in the leader, because as you drive that over, the leader will come out and still pile up, and I find that a little bit easier to make the right presentation to a fish when the wind's blowing. 